Welcome back to our corner box video series. In this video, we're gonna be showing you how to use the corner box. But before we do that, make sure to check out our other videos if you haven't seen them already. We talk about what exactly is a corner box and how does it work, as well as what your mud consistency should look like when using it. So let's just jump right into it. The first thing I wanna mention before we even get our pump in the mud is how your corner box should be installed on your handle. I, I think in my opinion, this is probably the number one mistake that most people do is when they first get their corner box, they oftentimes put the corner box on the wrong way. Instinctively, you would think that the arm uh, would, would go like that, but that doesn't apply the proper leverage to the wall. So you'd think because of the hinge that you'd want to put that most that that kind of pressure at the back, but this bracket here is already on an angle. So this is the number one mistake I see people do is they put their handle on backwards. This is not how it should go on. So I'm going to loosen this. This is how the angle should be. So you want that bend going the opposite direction. There's already an angle on your back bracket here. So that provides the proper leverage. So again, you want the bend going away from your, uh, your hinged gate at the back here. So you can see if I put this up to the wall, you got nice leverage along the back. If you have it going the other way, like this, you just don't get the same, the same leverage. So that's the number one mistake I see people do is they put this handle on backwards. So we'll get that out of the way. First thing, now we've got our handle on the right way. I'm gonna torque that down. There we go. So now we've got our handle on. We've talked about what our mud consistency should look like. Our mud is nice and thin but not too thin that it's gonna run down the wall, not too thick that we're gonna overexert ourselves trying to push this corner box. So now we're pretty much good to go. Something else I wanna mention is it's very important to lubricate all your tools. So you can see how smooth this corner box is right here. So that's because it is lubricated. We like to use fluid film. So very important to lubricate your seals and your gasket. That way it ensures that this operates very smoothly. If you're going to use your automatic taping tools and you see that your seal is kind of chattering, it's almost doing like one of these, like a You don't want that. You want that to be nice and smooth. You don't want some kind of chatter along your seal because that's gonna translate onto the wall. It'll be harder for you to push and you're gonna see those kind of chatter marks along the wall. So always lubricate your tools uh, before using them and after cleaning them, very important. So you can see how smooth this is running. So that's what we're looking for. And of course, our nozzle in here is nice and clean. We cleaned it properly before putting it away last time. So now we're ready to put it to the wall. So we're gonna go ahead and take our pump, drop that in the mud. I'm gonna prime the pump, just run some mud through it. So we're not pumping water or air into our corner box. So there you go, getting the water out of it getting a little bit of mud. There's our mud coming out. So now we're ready to fill up our corner box. So I'm going to close the back gate here all, all the way to the front of the corner box. And then as I start to fill the nozzle up with mud, you're gonna see that that gate is going to hinge all the way to the back here and it's going to hit this little lever which prevents the corner box from opening so you want to make sure that that lever is turned down so that that doesn't open up on you and cause a big mess all over the place so we're going to put our nozzle to the pump and push that in like that and i like to angle my my uh, corner finisher over the bucket of mud. That way if mud comes out the nozzle here, it falls back 
into the bucket. So I don't like, I don't want to be kind of like out here, try to, try to angle it so that it's facing the bucket of mud like that. And then we're just going to go ahead and start pumping. So I'm going to close my gate just so you guys can kind of see as I start to pump, you can see that back gate is kind of starting to fill up. And there you go. So now I can see mud is coming out the nozzle. If I continue to pump, mud's just gonna keep coming out the front here. So now we, we know that we're full. Our back gate has hit our little lever here and mud is coming out the front of the angle head. So we know that we're full. Now, one thing I like to do before getting started is I like to fill my angle head with mud. So what I do to do that, I'm just gonna kind of push down on the back here, forcing more mud out the angle head. And I'm gonna take that and just kind of with my finger, fill the back of the angle head. That way our angle head is nice and full before we take it to the wall. So as soon as we put it to the wall and we start pushing, we know that we're gonna have a nice even fill because there's already mud filled up in the angle head. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and take this to the wall and show you guys what exactly it looks like. So obviously you can only get so close to your inside three-way corner. You can see we've already kind of touched up our inside three ways a little bit. Um, so you can only get so close with your corner box and your corner finisher. So after you finish your angles, you always gotta touch up your three ways by hand. So we're gonna put this to the corner and show you guys what this tool is all about. So I got it set in the corner. You want to have this tool at a 45 degree from your inside 90, from your inside corner. So you don't wanna be up here like this. You don't wanna be down here like this. You want your corner finisher to sit perfectly square inside that 90 degree corner. So you want your tool, your handle, to be at a 45 degree. So you can see I've got it there. So if we're nice, we're secure in place. You're gonna start pushing. And as you push, you're gonna start moving down the wall. Now, most of your strength is going to be on this arm. This is where you're going to be pushing. This hand here is mostly kind of just to, to direct where I'm going. So I'm gonna start moving this way, but all my force is up here with this shoulder. So we got it tucked into the corner there. We're gonna start moving down the wall. Usually, I like to do two passes. I'll go one direction and then I'll come back a second direction. So there we go, we just did that corner right across. Now, if you take a look here, you can see I've got a little bit of overspill. That's not bad, that's acceptable to me because then I could just give that a quick clean, just take that bottom edge off with my knife. Now, this is one of the uh, cons to having very thin mud. If your mud is very thin, you're gonna be pushing it out a lot more and you might get a little extra overspill here and there. So you can see along this run, that was the only place where I had overspill. You can see if we pan along here, we've got a nice finished angle. So there's our first angle. Now we're gonna pump this up again. We still got a little bit of mud in here. We got, we're about, uh, I wanna say three quarters of the way empty, but we're gonna pump it up again before we start our next run. So again, putting this into the pump. As I start pushing down, you'll see my back hinge is gonna to start to kind of open up a little bit. You can see the handle is opening. And there you go. You can see my back gate is full against that lever right there. So we know that we're full. Now we're ready to take it to the corner again. So when it comes to uh, upright angles, uh, vertical angles, I like to start at the bottom. I'll do the first two, three feet. And then I start at the top and I pull off 
at the bottom. Very similar to when you're using a flat box. We've talked about this in our flat box series. Uh, I like to start at the bottom and then pull off down low so my flip is down low. It leaves a much smaller, tighter flip than if you're pulling uh, upwards. So I gotta start in our corner again. I'm gonna start down low. And I'm gonna put my elbow right into, right into my side here, right into my hip, and that's so that I can get leverage to pull up. So you'll see I'm gonna crouch down, I'm gonna put my elbow into my side here, and then I'm gonna come up about two feet. That's done. Now I'm gonna start back at the top, a little bit away from my outside three-way so we don't get too much mud up there. And then same thing, I'm gonna put leverage on the top here. I'm gonna start going down. And I'm gonna pull off right at the bottom there. So if you take a look here, if we get a nice little close up, you can see it's still a little hollow on the sides here. Our angle head didn't quite fill, so I'm gonna pass over that one more time just to get rid of that little hollow spot. There we go. Something else I haven't mentioned yet that I should quickly point out is which direction to run your corner finisher or your angle head. So you can see the blades at the top here. You wanna make sure that the blades are at the back of the direction you're going in. So you got, you got your little wheels at the front. It's a little hard to see here because they're kind of covered in mud, but you wanna lead with those wheels. There's one on either side here. So when we go up to the corner, we're leading with our wheels and our blades, which are at the top of the angle head, are at the back. Because that's what's gonna give us our, ni our nice tight finish are those blades. And again, the angle heads are spring loaded. So you see if I pull on here, if I push on here, you can see that kind of spring. So you wanna make sure that when you put your angle head to the corner, that uh, you've got it pushed in nice and securely in place before you start moving. You don't wanna kind of have it in there and not push tight. So you can see I have it in the corner right now, but if I kind of push, you can see that movement there, right? You guys see that? So that's what we're looking for. You wanna get it in the corner, you wanna push tight, and then you wanna start moving down the wall and applying mud. So again, with the blades at the back, wheels at the front, you're leading with your wheels. You do not want to run your angle head backwards like this. You will not get good results. It just doesn't work like that. So make sure to lead with those wheels, have your blades at the back, and you want to be on a nice 45 from the corner. So again, you can take a look at this very nice, even fill along that corner. Something else I wanna talk about very quickly is drag. So this is again a pro and con to thick or thin mud. So if you can see here in the corner, we got a lot of drag from our uh, corner finisher. Some people refer to this as Christmas trees because it kind of looks like a little Christmas tree, right? We've talked about this before with our flat box videos. Same thing applies with your corner applicator. So if your mud is very thin, it's gonna result in a lot more Christmas trees or drag in the corner at the start of a run. So when you first put that box into the corner and you start to push, because your mud is thin, it's gonna, it's gonna overlap on the back of your angle head over the back of that blade and it's going to result in a lot more drag at the start of your run. So this is an example of that. This is a pretty um, minor drag. It's not, it's not too serious. So when I go to touch up this three-way, it's going to cover that drag. It's only, it's only, you know, kind of down about three inches. So that's easy to hide. But if my mud was any thinner, that drag could be like eight inches down the wall. So by having a little bit thicker mud, it'll result in less drag when you start a run. So again, if your mud's thin and you're getting a lot of heavy drag, maybe try thickening your mud a little bit. Right now, I feel like my mud is the perfect consistency. It's coating nicely. I'm not having to overexert myself. It's not resulting in too much drag and it's not making a mess all over the walls. 
So now we've kind of gone over the basics. I'm just gonna go ahead at my regular speed and you guys can just follow along. And if I see that there's any tips or tricks that come to mind as I'm working, then uh, you know I'll make sure to share those with you. Uh, one thing that comes to mind right away, uh, as I'm starting on this little run here, you don't wanna start on the outside going into your three-way. Because here I could start in my three-way and I could just pull past the corner bead as opposed to working myself into the corner and possibly you know hitting the other wall and making a dent so you always want to work typically from your three ways out if you're not working into an inside corner so in, in this example you know we can run past this corner bead so we could just pull off this way when we're doing this wall here we'll start into our corner and we could pull off past the corner bead i'm not going to start at the bead well I mean I'll just go ahead and I'll show you so I could start here because I'm gonna do two passes like I said I like to go over things twice so I'll start maybe an inch or two from inside the edge of my bullnose bead I'll pass once come back start in my three-way I'll finish off that ang that half of the angle and then I'm gonna do the whole thing over again and pull off past that corner bead now here's another little good example. You can see there's a little chunk of crap right in the mud there. You don't want to leave that there. That's not going to sand out very well. So you just want to pick that out. Call those, call those hitchhikers, little hitchhiker there. So then I'm going to go over it one more time just to get rid of my finger mark. It's still kind of there actually, a little something. So do it one more time. That's the nice thing about this tool. You can go over it multiple times that's done now same thing here i'm going to start inside my three-way pull past my corner bead one two now i start at the bottom again i'm going to tuck my elbow into my hip so i got good leverage for that corner now pull up here's another example we caught a little chunk of crap could be a little piece of paper on the drywall or a little chunk of rock so it left a groove in our finish on the left hand side of our angle and i was facing upright this way so i know it's on the left hand side of my angle head so i'm just going to run my finger along the back of that blade pull that out of there and then i'm going to do that one more time there you go that bottom half is done I'm going to start at the top, work my way down, go over it a second time, there we go. A little bit of a thick edge here, I'm going to go do the bottom half one more time to kind of get rid of this thick edge. That could be for a number of reasons, could be I wasn't holding the, uh, the corner applicator uh, to a perfect 45, maybe I was putting pressure a little more on one side than I was the other. So it left a little bit of a thick edge here. I could kind of just clean that up with my knife or I could pass the corner box one more time. So still didn't get rid of it. So it could be it's because the corner is a little out of square. I'll just feather that in with my knife like that. So we don't leave that thick edge for sanding. So you can see this three way fairly clean very minimal cleanup in this three-way there's not a lot of drag there's not a big mess in that corner so my mud is a pretty good consistency it's not blobbing out oozing out of the corner and I have a big mess to clean up so now when I go back with my hawk and knife that'll be nice and easy to clean up that inside three-way something else i want to quickly talk about is the size of your angle head that's very important we haven't talked about that yet so the angle head that i'm using is a three and a half inch angle head so angle heads are available in various sizes as small as two and a half all the way up to a four inch so typically you see two and a half three three and a half four they go up in half inch increments uh, so this is a three inch level five angle head uh, it looks different than the one i'm using now because this is one of their newer angle heads so they're all red now i'm using my old school one because this is just this is old faithful for me it just runs great so i like using that angle head now we are using a three and a half inch angle head for our finish coat on our angles we like to tape using a flusher 
Um, now, there's a lot of different combinations you could use for how you apply your tapes and how you finish them. There's different sizes and there's different styles. So we use a flusher for applying our tapes. You could use an angle head when applying your tape, but I find that an angle head, because it's spring loaded, it almost takes too much mud off in my opinion. And then I find when I'm doing my finish coat with my corner box that it sometimes I end up seeing the tape flashing through the mud because the first coat when we were uh, applying our tapes and wiping the tapes, if we use an angle head, it almost takes too much mud off. I find I get better results when I'm taping with a flusher. So this is not, uh, it's not spring loaded. It's not like a, like a mechanical angle head. It's just a, a tin flusher. Uh, they leave a very nice finish as well. So we like to tape with a flusher and then we do our finish coat with an angle head. So our flusher leaves a little more mud in that inside corner. So if you take a look here, if we take a look at this angle, this hasn't been coated yet. This is just our tape coat using a three inch flusher. And you can see our tape is nice and full. So it results in uh, less mud needing to be applied for our finish coat. So again, you can experiment yourself with what gives you the best results. There's nothing wrong with using an angle head for your tape. Um, or using a flusher. It's whatever yields the best results for you guys. Myself, personally, I like to run a flusher for my tape coat and then I finish with a three and a half inch angle head. So typically we use a three inch flusher and then we finish with a three and a half. Again, different ways of doing this. I know some people who use a three inch flusher for their tape coat and then they use a two and a half inch angle head for their finish, just that much smaller. Generally speaking, you, you go bigger. So if you're using a two and a half inch flusher for your tape coat, you'd use a three or a three and a half for your finish. Or if you're using a three inch flusher, you'd use a three and a half or a four inch for your finish. But again, do what works best for you, what yields the best results on your job sites. So again, myself, I like to use a three inch flusher for the tape coat and I use a three and a half, which is what we are running today uh, on our angle head. So I'll go ahead and I'll show you Again, this has not been coated. This is just our tape coat, and you can see how nice and full that tape is, right? The tape is pretty much all hidden. You can barely see any of the yellow from the paper tape. So very nice, full coat with our three inch flusher. And I'll show you what that looks like after we pass our angle head. So going across one direction, I'm gonna finish that half and then I'm gonna come back and do the whole thing over again. And because I'm working inside two walls, I'm gonna to have to lift off in the middle somewhere. Unlike an outside corner where I could just pull past, pull past the corner bead, here I'm working between two walls, so I'm gonna to have to leave a flip somewhere in the middle. You could also carry your flip right to the corner and kind of pivot your box out um, myself, I just, I don't mind leaving a flip somewhere in the middle, leave a little flip right there. Um, but what some people will do is they'll carry that right to the outside corner. And I'll show you an example of what that looks like. So you would go right till you get to the corner. And then as you get to the corner, you kind of tilt your box down so that you can get right to the three way. So I kind of slowed it down a little bit there to show you guys, but I'll do it faster, going the other direction. There you go. So you can take that right to the three-way, that way there's no center flip that needs to be sanded out. Again, outside corner, I could start in the middle, just pull through my corner bead. One, two. Same thing here, I'll start at the bottom. I'm gonna tuck my elbow into my hip. Got good leverage, so I'm not overexerting myself. I'm gonna start at the top, push, work my way down. One, two. So again, I ran it right to the bottom. Some people will leave a flip halfway. There's nothing wrong with that. You're just gonna have to sand that flip 
when you come to do uh, your final sand. So all kinds of different tips and tricks. I'm gonna go ahead and do this long run. We're almost out of mud, so I'll kind of show you what happens. There you go, you can see just ran out of mud there. You're not gonna go too far with no mud. So now we're gonna go ahead, pump this up again. One, two, three, and we're full. You can see the back gate is hitting our lever right there. I start in this corner. Very important to keep a clean job site, guys. <laughs> there we go, no flips. We carried it right to the corner. Again, elbow into my side, get good leverage. You can see I'm gonna force right in here, tuck it right into my side. That way we're not overexerting our arms. I'm gonna carry that right to the bottom. Picked up a little, a little hitchhiker, a little scratch in my corner box. So I'm gonna do that again, start at the top. I'm gonna carry that right to the bottom so there's no flip that needs to be sanded. Something else I wanna mention is after, you know, 45 minutes, an hour, uh, maybe, maybe longer, maybe sooner, it depends how, uh, how hot it is or how humid it is, you'll notice that your angle head is gonna to start to crust up. You're gonna start getting mud drying up on the back and sides. So every now and then, not a bad idea to take your angle head, grab a scrub brush, and just kind of quickly brush off the back and sides where your blades are. That way you're not dragging kind of any crusties along the way, dragging that down your wall. So like I said, just give it a quick clean just to get rid of that and then you're good to go. So we are almost done this room. And I think that just about does it for our series on how to use this tool. So I'm just gonna keep going. We'll get a couple action shots for you guys. And that's pretty much it. mud so you can see you don't go super far with a seven inch box so i would recommend springing for the eight inch it's a little more money but you will get that much further um, along the wall and it's less trips back and forth to the pump so that just about wraps up this video on how to use the corner box. I hope that was helpful and hope you guys were able to learn something from it. Thanks a lot for watching and have a great day. Hey, thanks for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it and you were able to learn something from it. If you didn't find what you were looking for, make sure to check out our other videos because we are constantly uploading new material. If you like what you see, make sure to hit that like button and don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell so that you get notified when we release new content. Thanks a lot for watching and have a great day.